Welcome to today's Tech Solutions session. Elevating Virtual Fall Recruiting with Simplicity Recruit. It is my pleasure to turn it over to our session speaker. Hi everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I'm May Rob and I'll be leading us through the webinar. Uh, bear with me for one second as I figure out how to share the screen. Hi. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start sharing my screen and then uh, take us through. I may need a little bit of help. Um, Molly or Ashley, where do I start sharing screen? There's a green share screen bot button. Yeah, that's what I'm not. So I'm not seeing that. Where you click start video, there should be on that panel a share screen button. Got it. Okay. Hopefully everyone is able to see my screen. Um, so my goal today uh, is to combine some data that we've gathered from schools, employers, and students over the past four months, uh, and then look at how that data should and can drive decisions regarding recruiting this fall. Uh, we're really all in this unprecedented uh, territory, and we're really thrust into it completely unprepared. Uh, so the speed and efficiency with which our company, our partner schools were able to mobilize and pivot to support students uh, was really incredible. Uh, similarly, through innumerable, innumerable conversations with employers, what companies were able to do and were willing to do uh, for summer interns and for new hires was really impressive. Uh, so now with some lesson learned and some experience, we're approaching fall and trying to plan how to meet the updated hiring plans and goals within this new construct. So over the past three to four months, we've run multiple surveys with our schools, with our employers, with students. I wanted to just share some of the more applicable results here, but also some of the interesting finds. Uh, so this chart, for example, along with the table on the next slide, illustrates how our partner schools perception of the impact of COVID uh, really impacted certain industries. And obviously certain ones were decimated by this pandemic. Um, what the perception was around entertainment and around retail, uh, while others like environment and technology were less so. And here it is just in table form in case that is a little bit easier to digest. So this visual is just what we see as the normal campus recruiting ecosystem consisting of connections through in-person events at universities, attendance at conferences, 
uh, virtual connections through online tools. And this year with the elimination or at least constricting of conference attendance and in-person events at universities, we find ourselves needing to find new media to create meaningful connections between employers and students. So the good news is that virtual alternatives already exist for nearly every campus recruiting activity. Sourcing tools offer an alternative channel to identify candidates, digital marketing, um, expand the potential for consistent engagement. Uh, virtual engagement allows most types of recruiting events to be conducted online, whether that's a webinar, a career fair, mentorship even, virtual office tour. Uh, and what we've heard from employers who have already ventured into virtual driven methods is that they've experienced previously unheard of outcomes in campus recruiting with regard to access to students. So we surveyed our partner schools on what their fall semester format will be. Um, only 12 uh, so far believe that uh, they will be in person, uh, 13 committed to being virtual. Uh, the other 163 really said they're either hybrid or it's still too early for them to make that determination. Um, now, um, I have another slide on safe reopening, but basically safe reopening really just means in-person classes, reopening of on-campus residences with restrictions and guidelines to minimize risk. Hybrid is some students and professors return to campus for curricula that will include both in-person and online instruction on a course-by-course -course basis. And then obviously fully virtual is where all classes are taught virtually with no in-person instruction or other activities uh, and on-campus residences may be partially or fully closed. So uh, even those that are planning for a safe reopening um, perhaps have needed to get uh, creative in terms of what the fall semester will look like in terms of a timeline uh, or in terms of anything else. Now on the employer side, 48% of employers said they probably wouldn't have recruiters traveling to campuses, even if those campuses were safely opening. 17% said they definitely weren't, and 29% said they maybe will travel. Um, only 1% of employers that we talked to said that they would definitely be traveling. Another 5% say they will probably travel. Um, we still have a ton of questions that as schools start to figure out their plans for fall, we want to uh, engage them on in terms of how to handle international students with reopening if they cannot travel safely to school. So even if you're opening, will classes still need to be offered virtually for those students who cannot return to campus. On the other side of it, if the school won't open, how do the schools plan to handle international students who are in different time zones or handle students from under, underserved communities who lack the same access to technology and internet. Um, now that there's been at least some sort of education happening during the spring term, we hope that schools are in a better position to answer some of those questions so that all of the student population can be better served. So it's interesting because obviously when we talk about the fall semester format, um, an overwhelming majority of the schools that we talk to are still making those decisions and figuring out what that looks like. Whereas when we talk about what fall semester recruiting is going to look like, um, the jury is definitely in. Uh, and only 1% of schools are saying that they will offer fully in-person options. Um, given that all universities essentially will offer at least some virtual options, we'd really like to learn more regarding how you will handle fall recruiting as it pertains to school selection. Um, and towards that end, we actually have a poll. So I'd like you to take the next minute and respond um, if my friends at NACE wouldn't mind loading that in.
Let's give it another few seconds. Ashley and Molly, I don't know if you can see on your end when is a good time to stop it. Awesome. Are we able to see those results or no? Oh, cool. So overwhelmingly, not sure yet. Um, so looks like 8% plan to contract the list um, nicely. 18% plan to expand the list. 10% um, say the number will remain unchanged, but we will look at different universities. Uh, and 15% have said that they will uh, not be making changes. So thank you to everyone who participated in that. Another thing that we've been talking to our schools about uh, as it pertains to perceptions is uh, what the fall might look like from the perspective of the upperclassmen. Um, so talking to them about what uh, percentage of their student population normally comes back to campus after a summer internship with their full-time offer in hand versus what that might look like this year. Um, so as you can see, 65% expect the number to be somewhat or considerably lower this year than in previous years when it comes to full-time offers. So a lot more opportunity to recruit top talent on campus that may have normally not been available by the time that September rolls around. So again, uh, I know we do a lot uh, in terms of sharing information from the school side, but we also uh, have definitely spoken to employers and uh, what they believe their hiring will look like uh, moving forward. So as expected, 46% believe that they will be hiring fewer entry-level hires this year, but encouragingly, 49% will be hiring about the same or more than they did previously. Um, in addition to this, more data that we have from employers, 28% canceled interviews this spring, 11% rescinded offers, and a whopping 45% delayed start dates. Um, one area that we're still exploring is around recruiting timelines and how they may be different this year due to updated and altered timelines from schools. Uh, in the law market, for example, uh, many schools delayed interviews until January of 2021. So employers are now engaging us and talking to us about how to recruit for both attorneys and summer associates at the same time, whereas those used to be on completely different timelines. So as that same sort of information starts to emerge uh, from the school side on the undergraduate uh, level, we'd love to, to see certain conversations like that take place as well and engage employers there. So. There are tried and true activities um, that we know are part of that ecosystem that we talk about uh, for campus recruiting and they fall under these main categories. We've got our social events, competitions, conferences, super days, office tours, on-campus events. And this year, those are all really converging under direct outreach and virtual presentations. And our worry um, as someone who is embedded within this world um, is virtual overload for the consumer, for the student. Too many emails and event invitations for a single student um, because it will be so easy for companies to send emails and inv in event invites far and wide. Um, so for students, the task will become elimination of the events that they won't attend. Um, and a lot of it may end up 
looking like inter interchangeable engagements, um, that these offerings and events will look similar and make them really hard to distinguish. Um, and because as an employer, there's really so much you can do to innovate within the parameters of direct messages and virtual events. Um, so the result may end up being an over-reliance on employer brand, which could really put lesser known brands at a huge disadvantage. So we've spent some time thinking through, how do you still stand out from the crowd? Uh, knowing that maybe there's not so much opportunity to innovate, how do you still make sure that a student who is receiving uh, 10 messages in a day, let's say, during um, slower times and up to 50 during fast times. How do you differentiate yourself? And we really do think that it falls within these different categories. Um, and if you keep to these rules, it'll hopefully be easier to do that. Um, creating truly custom and personalized outreach, really trying to capture students during times that work for them for other times that work for the employers. I worked with someone this spring um, who was sending out a really a ton of invitations, I would say, uh, for information sessions and at one point reached out and said, hey, could you work with me? I'm really not having a lot of success. The events were Tuesdays at two o'clock. Well, most students are in class on Tuesdays at two o'clock. So we made a simple switch and made um, the events at 6.30 on Tuesdays and seemingly overnight, uh, they were able to obviously increase their attendance by a ridiculous amount because students could now attend and the messaging was there. Every other factor was there. Um, it really was just a timing issue. Also, relatability is huge. If you're able to connect students either to alumni from their school or to people who will be doing the job that you're trying to recruit them for, that tends to work a lot better than company reps. So the same strategies that you would normally use at a career fair obviously works for virtual as well. Also, thinking about messaging in terms of education. Can I add value with this message rather than just regurgitate company data. The length, right? You want to be able to grab students. This isn't a time to send uh, really wordy and long emails. Um, you can easily send them somewhere where they can learn more about the company if they're not that familiar with you. That shouldn't necessarily part, be part of the initial messaging that you send to, to a student. And finally, make it as personal, personal as you possibly can, knowing that it is virtual. It's funny because if you had talked to us in November uh, and asked us what student perception was about video chats over in-person chats, students hated them right? All the feedback was so negative around uh, employers not coming on campus and instead using video. And now students are requesting video, obviously, over the alternative of phone. So students are embracing this new world that we're living in. Employers are as well. And we definitely think that there is an opportunity to still stand out from the crowd. In addition, uh, in terms of um, again, successful sort of opportunities to connect uh, campus ambassador programs, if that's not something that you've tried before, uh, and especially if you're currently running an intern program virtually, uh, use those students as they return to campus to sell their friends uh, since they will still be connecting. In addition, uh, if the school is in person or if the school still has opportunities to connect through uh, clubs, uh, sponsoring those is still something that, that works. And 37% uh, of employers that we've spoken to said that they will participate with another 39% saying that they weren't sure diversity conferences are moving online and that's another opportunity for you to connect with um, 
different demographics or uh, to really attack your DNI initiatives. Um, so um, again, there are still great ways for you to connect on the flip side and speaking with students uh, and how, uh, how their um, their thought process around what makes an ideal employer has changed in, in this period, uh, we find that job stability is now top of the list. So established large companies for the first time in years are actually much more attractive to students than are um, startups. So being able to talk about your, uh, first of all, how you've handled this period and what your retention has looked like and what you've been able to do to work with your empl employees would be great. Another thing that's really important and something that you can use uh, in your recruiting efforts is that students are actually looking to stay near a familiar place. So whether that's returning home or whether that is, uh, staying near their college town. Fewer students for the first time are looking to move to a new and exciting metropolitan area that they've wanted to explore because they realize that there, if there is another lockdown, they may need to hunker down and they want a community. So I'd like to switch gears and we've spoken about um, some of the uh, information that we've seen. Now I'd like to discuss how to use Recruit successfully in order to um, meet those uh, criteria. So most campus recruiters, I would say, are probably familiar uh, with Simplicity and work with at least some of our network schools. But we also do work directly with employers through Recruit, which is our centralized employer platform. Uh, so through Recruit, employers can save valuable time conducting the critical recruiting activities that will be key this fall, uh, from creating that cohesive and attractive campus campus brand, selecting and potentially altering those campus uh, recruiting target schools, and making sure they're reaching the right students at the right time. So I am going to stop sharing for a minute so that I can switch. To my demo. Okay. Hopefully everyone can see my screen again. Um, so this is the Simplicity Recruit platform. Um, so uh, there are a few key things that I want to go through today. Uh, and I'm going to start with the brand, uh, which was one of the first things that we talked about, that um, potentially there will be more of a reliance on brand this year uh, and smaller, less established brands may be at somewhat of a disadvantage. So recognizing that we want to make sure that it is easy for you to uh, disseminate your brand to your schools and to students. And that starts with your employer profile. So I can come in here and I can update and quickly share all of my updated information with schools. So this is a great way to ensure that the most up-to-date information about my company, especially right now, is out there. Um, I can add exactly what I've done during this time, talk about the culture, talk about the environment, uh, upload a featured video, uh, and do um, and, and add uh, a banner image. So really have those multimedia um, tools that students tend to connect with more. 
Um, and when it comes to the video, I actually, uh, to a lot of my clients have said previously that sometimes it's not an overly glossy video that does best with students. Sometimes it's an intern with a phone uploading a video about what they do during a day for five minutes and uploading that and that tends to get uh, sometimes more traction. Uh, the other thing that you're able to do with your brand once it's built, and this is exclusively through Recruit, is actually embed those multimedia components into any job that you're posting with us. Uh, so again, making sure that when students are clicking into it, they can get beyond just the job description and really get an understanding for your culture, for the career path, for the camaraderie. Um, so that it is all right there for them without needing to switch into different areas of their school's platform. Um, so uh, I want to also talk about uh, schools. Uh, from that poll, it definitely seemed like employers this year are open to either expanding the number of schools that they're going to or looking at the list and selecting different schools, even if the number overall is the same. Then that's actually something I encourage my clients to do every summer. As they're planning their fall recruiting, um, I always say, let's look through your schools. Let's think about your results. Let's figure out what additional schools might make sense. And I'm sure that if any of my clients are, um, are listening in right now, they're probably either nodding their head or rolling their eyes because I may have already had this conversation with them for this year. But I definitely think that this year, more than any other, we have this unique opportunity to reach an audience um, that we wouldn't have otherwise due to either geographic barriers that we may have had or due to uh, money and cost issues that just aren't going to come into, into play this year. So I can come into my schools tab here and it's going to default to the schools where I currently have a connection. Uh, but I can also toggle over into all schools and then search uh, either by um, the type of program that they offer, the type of degree that they offer, location, again, whatever it might be. And then I can click into any of the schools. Let me go into one of my connected schools. I can click into any of my schools. I can see exactly what rights I currently have. I can see what they offer. So there's more transparency there. And then if interviews were offered, for example, but I didn't have them right now, we also make it easy for you to reach out to the school and connect with them and see whether that is something that you may be able to, uh, to get access to. Um, so this is, this is something that we're actually, um, I would say, sets us apart and something that we're really proud of. Uh, our goal is employability. And we definitely think that regardless of the market, but especially in this type of a market, the tried and true formula in campus recruiting is connecting employers and career centers. Uh, that is how students overall get hired. It is that trusted, um, it is that trusted relationship that that works. So uh, making it as easy as possible for you to connect with them uh, is definitely something that we wanted to, to be able to do. In terms of changing, so let's say I no longer want to recruit from Demo University of Simplicity, I'm currently active. I can actually deactivate that connection, which means that I won't for the time being get uh, notifications from them. Uh, and as you can see, I have complete control over that. I can change it at, at any time. So the final place that I want to spend time today uh, is in terms of expanding the pool of uh, students that you access beyond those that are actively applying to your jobs. Um, so uh, and the jobs that you post specifically. So we offer a couple ways to do that through Recruit. The first one is Smart Invite. So whenever you post a job with us, um, we offer 
Smart Invites, which basically just uses machine learning to send that job to students who recently applied to similar roles, and it encourages them to view your posting. Uh, so it's really just a way to hopefully increase uh, the number of qualified and interested and engaged applicants to the jobs that you're already posting. The other place that we're doing that um, and the other way that we look for you to be able to pull additional in, uh, applicants and candidates into your process is through global search. So um, this is our opt-in resume database. We have over 450,000 active students and alumni resumes for employers to search and connect with. And I always say that recruiting really does require push and pull activities. Um, there are very few, if any, uh, employers at this point who can simply post a job and get all of the hires that they need. They really need to find ways to also pull candidates and potential candidates uh, into that process. And sourcing has become the biggest uh, avenue for that, whether it's sourcing through conference attendance, whether it's sourcing through, uh, at this point, obviously, virtual database. So we are um, very excited to, to be able to provide this so that you can supplement active applications. Um, so I can come in, I can run whatever string search I'd like to. I can use the, the keyword search here, or I can use any of the filters that are available to me. And then once I have the results, I can certainly click into any resume and view it. Um, I can save the searches so I have them all available here. So this is one that I just created. I can go into this one. It's going to show me my results. Again, I can process these one by one by going into a particular candidate. I can download the resume. I can add tags, whatever I'd like, or I can actually do bulk actions. So I can, um, for all of the results that I've gotten here, add tags, save as Excel, or send an email. And sending an email, this is where um, that messaging and the length of the messaging and the content really comes into play, making sure that I'm sending a um, personalized, meaningful, and impactful message. So anything that I do, I can save, uh, I can then recall anything that I've already saved under my templates. And then I can continue to make changes. So let's say I want to save changes to this. So maybe instead of full name, I prefer to use first name. And maybe instead of saying that I found the resume on Simplicity Recruit, since our students work through their school database and don't log into our system, I want to say that I found them at the particular school or based on a major, whatever it is that I'd like. And once I have my message completed, I can go ahead and send it. And even though 72 recipients will receive it, again, I can make sure that each one of them feels like I truly looked at their resume and found some reason to reach out to them specifically. So in the last few months, uh, we've actually seen uh, some great creative uses of, of um, the database. I talked a little bit about uh, the one uh, employer who actually has, happens to be the largest employer of um, technology entry-level talent in the U.S. Um, they switch to hosting virtual events on a weekly basis, and we're using our database in order to find the students to to invite uh, and we're able to get um, 
full participation and, and really robust events going uh, in that way. Uh, we also had a top national uh, education uh, institute that uses, that uses um, the global search database to um, supplement applications in particular locations. They're uh, less attractive locations and, and really pull in uh, using the location and losing, using keywords, uh, finding students who have ties to those locations and inviting them to um, and inviting them to look at the jobs in, in those locales. And especially, again, over the last few months, we've seen them have a ton of success with that because students are looking for more familiar, uh, for more familiar locations. I'm going to just pause here again. as I switch gears. So again, I, I just want to say again, uh, we are in unprecedented uh, territory here. Um, but as a lifelong campus recruiting professional, I'm definitely excited uh, to be witnessing employers and higher education institutions pivot and evolve to ensure that the entry level market uh, remains a viable option. Um, we have definitely seen that for company culture and for succession planning, there is nothing better than campus recruiting and entry level recruiting in order to create those pipelines. Um, so my team and I would welcome the opportunity to connect with each of you further to discuss your strategy for fall uh, and to see how we may best support you. Uh, we thank you for your time today uh, and I'd love to open it up for questions. So if any have been submitted, uh, we would love to take some time and answer those or, or have a discussion. Molly, Ashley, I don't know if there were any questions or anything else or. I'm sending them through the chat over to you. Oh, okay. Let me. Awesome. So we actually have some questions about um, applicant tracking system integrations. Um, so um, we have a few different options that are available there. The, so first of all, uh, with jobs, you can bypass our system completely uh, and have students apply um, directly into whatever your applicant tracking system of choice is. Uh, I would say about 50 to 55 percent of our employers do uh, utilize and leverage that option. Um, and then beyond that, uh, we have APIs available. Um, that you can definitely take advantage of and we can and we can look at how that would work uh, and depending on which students you're looking to get in there whether it's from on-campus interviews or whether uh, it's from global search or whatever the case is uh, we can definitely explore to see whether there's opportunity for that.
So we do have both, uh, we have a question on, on whether Recruit is free or, or premium. Um, so uh, both, uh, there is definitely a free version. Again, our main, um, our, our main mission is to connect employers and, uh, and schools. So towards that end, you are able to access, recruit, manage your school connections at any time. Uh, you're able to disseminate your employer profile. Um, you're definitely able to, once you are connected to schools, log into them um, and post jobs directly to them individually. Uh, the parts that are um, paid are our multi-school postings uh, and our access to the uh, to global search, and there are a tons of a ton of ways that we can uh, engage with you on those. So we would welcome the opportunity to connect and see um, and see what is what makes the most sense. Uh, so I actually have a question here about virtual career fair and how that looks to students and employers. Um, so I actually do not have, so we are in the process of building a virtual career fair tool uh, and um, we will be hosting, we've been hosting some sessions for our schools uh, and then we will also have the opportunity to obviously educate our employers on what exactly that will look like. So I would be more than happy to connect with anyone that's interested in that um, or with uh, my team and make sure that you see exactly what that will look like and exactly um, how, it will, uh, how it will work and look for all the constituents. Uh, I have a question around uh, options for a department in a school to join and pricing. So we do actually work with some of our partner schools who license CSM from us, also do utilize Recruit in order to advertise positions. Um, so that is definitely something that, that we can explore. Um, there might still be some sort of nominal fee associated with it, but again, it's definitely something that we would be happy to discuss and, and see exactly, um, exactly how it would work. I believe that is... That are that is all of the questions that I see at the moment. Um, certainly, if there are any others, um, please. Uh, I shared my contact information. Um, it uh, so definitely get in, in touch with us, and uh, we would welcome the opportunity uh, to explore further. We thank NACE and we thank you for uh, this opportunity today and for joining us. And uh, we wish everybody uh, luck and success with fall recruiting. Thank you very much. Thank you to our speaker for a very informative session, and thank you, participants, for attending today's session. This officially concludes the webinar and you may now sign off.